Welcome into Atlanta Falcons today. I am Tom Downey. Here's what's coming up on today's show. The Falcons have made multiple roster moves, including one notable release of a guy I guarantee you've heard of. And we'll break down four different trade targets floated out there by various media outlets that could be a fit, and maybe whether they're not a fit, for the Atlanta Falcons. Before all that, though, like the video right now. Now, there's no way for us, even on the back end, to actually know who likes the video. It just shows the total number of likes, not who liked it. So, so we can give you some actual love for doing so, because we greatly appreciate it when you like our videos here at Falcons Today. Type me in the comment section, and we'll show you some love. No lying, though. Please, come on, let's all be adults here. Like the video, and then type me once you do. We begin with the release of a former second round pick who I think we can officially call a draft bust if we hadn't already called him. Marlon Davidson, the defensive lineman released by the Falcons off of injured reserve. So he's not coming back to Atlanta anytime soon. That is a fairly significant move for the former second round pick who just never quite got going in Atlanta. He was drafted as part of the old regime, the Dan Quinn regime, and sometimes I wonder if the front office and Dan Quinn were on the same page about what type of player really fit what Quinn wanted to do overall on offense or, he, or on defense or he Morris wanted to do on defense when he was the DC. He was placed on IR before the year with a knee injury. Timmy Horn is flash as a rotational defensive lineman. It's a new regime, not the same one that drafted Davidson. And it was just time to move on. So the Davidson error is now over. Some more roster moves. Bo Pete Keys, elite name. His first name is Thakarius, by the way. Out of Tulane, some Bears Chiefs history. Signed to the Falcons practice squad, probably in light of some injuries in recent weeks along that secondary. He's got some corner and I think some safety flex as well, but he's mostly played corner in the NFL. To make room for Keys, Jordan Brailford, the Oklahoma State product, has been released from the Falcon, Falcons practice squad. Remember, the Davidson leads from IR, so there's actually no move from that standpoint coming or required. It's just it was IR. If you have not already, help us get to 8,500 subscribers. We got past 8,000. Thank you all so much. 401 away. Maybe less than that by the time you guys hit that red button. So hit that subscribe button right now, youtube.com slash Falcons TV. Let's go to Cam Akers, our first Falcons trade target. Now, this is not my idea. I want to be clear on that one. I'll, I'll avoid all responsibility for this. CBS Sports, uh, Cody Benjamin, put out six trade destinations for Cam Akers. The Vikings at six, the Eagles at five, the Lions in four, Chargers three, Falcons two, Broncos in number one. And I question if he's really that great of a fit for Atlanta. Number one to be blunt, honest, and truthful, Cam Akers has been bad since his a Achilles injury he suffered uh, last year. You know, he came back really quick. That was awesome. 56 carries, a not insignificant sample size, 2.8 yards per carry. That's not good. That's that's not replacement. That's not just a guy level. That's you're not an NFL player level. Now, I think Akers can get better. The Rams' offensive line has been pretty bad. The Falcons have a great ground game and great ground game philosophy. But you're also getting Cordero Patterson back as soon as after this week. And he's posted some videos of him rehabbing. Seems like he's pretty close. Why would they trade for a running back? I don't see that making any real sense for the Falcons. I don't think that's a fit for what they need. They got other needs elsewhere on that roster. But we'll leave it up to you, the people. Do you want to trade for Cam Akers? Why for yes? N for no. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break happens to come here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, Y or N. Next up is Deron Payne. And this one's more intriguing to me, by the way, is I do think he is available. And that also comes to us from Ben Standing of The Athletic, the, the commander's beat reporter. A source with knowledge of trade negotiations says the commanders could potentially get a 2023 second or third round pick by trading defensive tackle Deron Payne. Look, folks, the Falcons are in the playoff mix. As bad as the Bengals game might have been, the NFC South is gettable. This year, the Bucks are not the same caliber. The Saints are a mess, and the Panthers are bad. To also be the Bucks makes no sense. 
I don't love what the Falcons have up front beyond Grady Jarrett. I think Tyquan Graham's a fine piece there. You plug Deron Payne in over the rotation of Horn and Dickerson and Anderson as your true nose guard, I think you're in a lot better shape. And that front becomes much more dynamic against the run and against the pass. Grady Jarrett's still playing at a very high level. He, of course, is not going anywhere right now after Deion Jones. That was the one, I think, sell piece the Falcons had beyond maybe Matt Hennessy, but I would strongly consider Deron Payne if it is a third-round pick. I can't trade my second-rounder. Third-round pick, though, I think about it. It's getting colder wherever you guys live, Atlanta or elsewhere. Get a Falcons hoodie. It's on sale today, chatsports.com slash ATL hoodie. We'll put that link for you guys in the comments section and in the description of today's video. Click, shop, and buy today, chatsports.com slash ATL hoodie. Wide receiver of the Patriots, Kendrick Bourne, is next up here. We talked about Patriots receivers multiple times here on the show, understandably so. Here's what Nesson, a, a local uh, Patriots, I'll call it website, but it's kind of like a sports network, for lack of a better term there, uh, wrote on some of the trade rumors out there. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler on Tuesday said multiple teams have called the Patriots to inquire about Kendrick Bourne, who slid down the depth chart this season after a productive 2021 campaign. I don't have a great reason for why. That is, uh, he had 800 yards in 2021, 667 in 2020. He brings you what you don't really have on this roster, that speedy vertical threat. London and Pitts can go downfield, don't get me wrong. They've got incredible size, but they're not the same like, you know, 4-4 speed guy, right? Now, we've also talked about Nelson Aguilar on this show before. Another fits the exact same, like, role, speedy vertical threat, kind of fun out of favor in New England. I, w I would not be shocked if one of these guys ends up getting moved by the trade deadline, especially after the, uh, call it what it was, a disaster on Monday Night Football for the Patriots offense. So pick one for me. If you could trade for one of these guys, who would it be? KB for Kendrick Bourne, NA for Nelson Aguilar. Sound off for me in the comments section. Two offensive pieces and two defensive pieces. Greedy Williams, the Browns corner, is next up here. And a very good name. To consider, because Brad Stainbrook reports that the Browns are listening to offers on cornerback Greedy Williams. Cleveland's off to a pretty rough start this year. Deshaun Watson's going to miss a good portion of the year. It might be too late by the time he returns to the roster. Selling players like Greedy do makes or does make some sense. He's kind of fallen down the Browns' depth chart. He's been up and down in his NFL career. Injuries have been a problem. He's got the height, weight, speed profile teams like to love. There was some talent from uh, previously for the uh, Browns and Williams, a uh, second-round pick out of LSU. But he's never been consistent. I think injuries are a big part of that. The constant shuffling of the defensive core uh, in terms of the, the, the coaching staff and philosophy, I don't think has been that great for Williams either. Although Woods have been a little bit more of a stabilizing presence. Joe Woods, their DC. Decent production in 2021. 10 pass breakups, two INTs. But the, the coverage numbers have only been okay. And you do question the medical side of it. But because he's young, because he's cheap, that is a decent name to consider. Could you get him for a fourth-round pick? You've got all these injuries right now with, with, with Casey Hayward, who's going to miss more time. We'll see when A.J. Trello is really 100% back all the way. And I think you're still pretty thin overall at corner. Adding a young piece like Greedy Williams is exactly what the Falcons should consider doing. He doesn't cost you a major draft capital hit. He's young enough to be part of your short-term and long-term plan. And there's untapped upside. That's the guy that could intrigue me the most out of all four names outside of maybe Deron Payne on this list. But what do you guys think? Who is your number one Falcons trade target? Maybe not even on that four-person list. Sound off for me in the comments right now.